Often, we find ourselves having to cluster data that contains both numerical features and categorical features. Standard clustering algorithms such as k-means do not work with categorical data by standard. Computing the Euclidean distance and the means in the k-means algorithm doesn't go well with categorical data. And, as you might already guess, there is not a standard approach to address this problem. There are, however, a few practical approaches to this limitation. We will discuss some of them in this video. One such approach is to do clustering based only on numerical data. When you need to do clustering that involves some categorical features, ask yourself the following question. Do I really need the categorical features in my clustering? Often, the answer to this question is no, not really. In that case, we just ignore the categorical features and cluster our data based on the other continuous and numerical features. Let me give you an example. I will create some synthetic data to demonstrate the clustering methods discussed in this video. The data will have 50 observations, 3 features and will uh, be composed by 3 clusters. Imagine that all these data points, the 50 observations, they are men that work out at the local gym. They are all above 75 years old and some of them are overweight. In this setting, the synthetic set of people will be characterized by three features, the age, the weight and the level of weekly exercise, either low or high. The feature of age is a numerical feature and the feature of weight too. These two features can be represented by numbers. However, it is trickier to deal with the feature that characterizes the exercise level. This feature is categorical. It either represents low or high levels of exercise. Again, we do not know the relative position of low versus high and it's not trivial to represent this feature numerical. We will see later what we can do with this feature. What we know for sure is that we have three clusters in the data. We can see these three clusters in yellow, purple and in green. Let us now try to cluster the data based solely on the numerical features of weight and age. I will for now hide the true groups of our data and only give the age and weight coordinates of each data point in the two-dimensional space. Let us see if the algorithm is smart enough to find the three clusters based only on two numerical features. After some iterations we obtain the algorithm output. The algorithm did identify quite successfully most of the points. The majority of the 50 people were correctly classified. However, we had some confusion on the boundary between the top and the middle cluster. Maybe with categorical data we can have better luck. A second approach to deal with categorical data is to encode the categorical data before we do the clustering. The idea is to transform our categorical features into numerical features even before we proceed to cluster the data. We can try to encode the categorical data using different methods, but a famous one is the scheme of one-hot encoding. Maybe you've already heard about the term one-hot encoding. Maybe not. But anyway, what is one-hot encoding and why do we use it? How do we use it? One-hot encoding is a possible process of converting categorical data variables into binary variables. And by binary variable, I mean a feature that assumes two values, 0 or 1. 
In one hot encoding, we transform categorical data, such as, for instance, colors, red, green, blue, into numerical data. By applying one hot encoding to a categorical variable, we transform the feature into one or more binary features, each representing a possible value of the categorical variable, the original one. In the case of our color column, red, green and blue, we create one column for red, another for green and another for blue. Each column says if that color is present or not. We use the numbers 0 and 1 to represent the yes value and the no value, respectively. Note that these new columns will substitute the original color feature. In our example, we need to create one feature for the categorical feature of exercise level. The binary feature is the level of exercise. For example, consider John. John is 8 years old and 75 kilos. He has a low level of exercise. So in the column level of exercise, John will be 0. If he had a high level of exercise, he would be 1. So with our three features, remember that we have two numerical features plus a binary feature, we can perform clustering again. Let us see if our results become better. After running the k-means on the data for several iterations, we reach a new result. The boundary points that were a problem previously are now well classified. But one point raises concern in the middle cluster. This point was previously correctly classified, but now no more. One hot encoding did not provide perfect results. Should we consider another scheme, another methodology? Before we proceed, can you indicate one problem of the one hot encoding approach? The obvious problem is that we can end up with an exploding number of variables, of binary variables. If we were clustering the favorite soccer team of different people, we would need a different dimension for each different soccer team, quite extenuating and computationally intense. A third approach to deal with this problem of categorical variables is to use a distance function that is more suited to mixed data. Mixed data is data that is both categorical and numerical. A distance function useful for mixed data is the Gower distance. The Gower's distance can be used to measure how different two records of our dataset, how different they are. The records may contain combinations of binary, numerical, categorical or text data. The distance is always a number between 0, when they are identical, and 1, when they are dissimilar. And then you have all the values in between. The Gower distance is a really, really good idea, but however, and unfortunately, even though the Gower distance is very useful in some contexts, it does not work with k-means directly. K-means can only be used in datasets where you can compute the arithmetic mean. What is the average of blue and purple? A hard question, hmm? Other clustering algorithms such as dbscan or hierarchical clustering techniques tend to rely just on the distances between the points and with those clustering algorithms you can work with the Gower distance, but not with k-means. However, let me say that despite the difficulty to apply Gower distance to k-means, there are a few academic works that try to work with the Gower distance within the k-means. A fourth approach to categorical variables is to use factor analysis for mixed data to convert a mixed state of continuous and categorical features into continuous components, different new features. The result of clustering our data with factor analysis was quite unexpected. The boundary line between the top clusters was respected, 
but the middle and the bottom cluster was mixed. Whenever we use factor analysis, we lose part of the original information, remember? So it's just a little bit natural that by losing information, we can also lose efficiency. And that's probably what happened in this case. Frequently, we get very good results with this methodology, but not this time. We can also turn to other algorithms that work directly with categorical data, such as the K-modes or the K-prototypes algorithm. Unfortunately, K-modes works only with categorical data, not mixed data types. If we apply K-modes to our problem, we have a very weird results. This is because K-modes tries to transform all our data into categorical data, even the numerical features, and then they apply the algorithm. This could work well if all our data was categorical, uh, but in, your, in our specific case, the data is mixed. K prototypes is another algorithm which was created with a specific purpose of handling the clustering of mixed data types, numerical and categorical variables. And in our case, the K prototypes algorithm gives a very acceptable result. It misses one single point on the boundary between cluster 1 and 2, but I think we can live with that, we can accept that. We hope that you have enjoyed the lesson. Uh, next lecture we will dive into the topic of distance functions in detail. And until then, thank you for watching and see you next video.